Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 150. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for the Nurburgring Class D series. We're going to be in a Class D car around the Nurburgring. Uh. Um, going to be starting off stage A, B, C, D. We're going to go through all of the stages. We're driving the Audi Quattro. Let's get going. Uh, I do, but uh, it's on my Steam Deck only at the moment. It's not on my PC. It says PS4 and PS5. Well, it wouldn't take me long to install it. My, with my internet, it would take... 15, 20 minutes? Shouldn't take too long. Do you know the one thing that's annoying is uh, I actually tried emulating on the Steam Deck. I don't understand why people are saying that the Steam Deck is amazing for emulation because they must be emulating like only older titles. Um, because I think the Steam Deck is good, but I can't emulate PSP games on it, and it won't emulate PS2 or anything like that. So the people that are saying that, you know, oh the Steam Deck is such a good emulation device, like. Please, tell me what your fucking settings are so I can run some PSP games. Like, I, I genuinely think the Steam Deck doesn't have enough CPU cores to actually, you know, emulate properly. It's a very weird one. Very strange. But then again, I did try, like, the actual PPSSPP. Might have been better trying RetroArch as well as an option because I didn't do it re retro arc at all mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this Audi's very nice to drive actually Nice, good start so far. Let's go to the next one. Dog is just sleeping in my bed. Like... I'm glad I don't have to sleep at all. I'm not tired. Because if I was tired... Yeet! Yeah, Ridge Racer 2 is not a big game. Remember, it had to fit on a little disc, which I believe the PSP discs were 1.2 to 1.8 gigabyte for the PSP. So every game on the PSP is below 2 gigabytes, 100%. Um, invited out tomorrow night, so i got to get up a bit later or I'm going to be so tired. Well, there's an easy solution to that. Stay up all night sim racing. <laughs> Do you know what... Um, actually is quite an enjoyable thing to do um, when you just want <laughs> don't even because I will yeah but you're saying you need to stay up later to do it it's a good way of good way of doing it <laughs> yeah I mean car X will do that to you I'm not even joking though, the amount of times that I've destroyed my sleep because of the Steam Deck. Because the thing is, right, my PC 
no matter what, trying to set up the PC, dealing with the mouse and keyboard, when I just want to lay in bed and play games, is such a pain in the ass. So the fact that the Steam Deck exists is awesome. I can play my games at, in bed and I don't have to worry about it. Sure. But the amount of times... Yeah, I mean, I, sh I should stop doing that. But at the same time, it's just like, I'm comfy and I can play my video games. Mm. A lot of people say it is better to associate lying down with sleeping. But... I love laying down and just chilling. Like, that's one of my enjoyments in life, is being able to lay down and chill. I don't know. I don't think I can give it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be able to give it up. I'd be like, nope. I must do it. I, I get the shakes from not being able to lay down in my bed. <laughs> That's how crazy. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Madness. Labyrinth. Come in. Oh my god, it's been years since I've heard that song. Why the hell has that popped in my head? Ah. It's the new Quattro versus the older Quattro. I feel like a little kid waiting for a gift. Honestly, I'm the same. Um, whenever I order something, I'm like very excited for it to arrive. I bought a... Um, it, it was the stupidest purchase ever. Because I, I didn't need it. And to be, well, at the time, it, it wasn't a necessity. It was more like, ah, I want this. This is cool. I bought a HDMI matrix so I could plug in all of my setup into one box and just, you know, have much easier control over what monitors my stuff goes to and that. It it's, honestly was so useful. But the problem is with the fact that I've just moved, I haven't got any of that stuff set up. Yeah, they are worth it. The one that I got's really good. It supports uh, HDR, um, Dolby Atmos, and everything. So it it's one that has is future proofed pretty much because I want to get a HDR monitor at some point, um, so that I can experience that. So I've I've basically future proofed myself. It's even got um, 120 hertz support, but the problem is um, it 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 was a bit of a sketchy one. It supports 120 hertz, but every monitor and every device plugged into it has to also support 120 hertz. So that means as soon as I plug in an Xbox 360, 60 hertz limit. Um, or my second monitor, which is only 60 hertz, hits that limit again. So it is dumb. But, I mean, I've got no problem with it. Because, again, m m YouTube doesn't support 120 hertz. I'm not going to record in 120 hertz. <laughs> I'd say 120 is the minimum, because 120 is like... I don't know. I think 120 should be supported by a lot of devices. For the sole re... I I I'll get on to it in a sec. Because... So yeah, my explanation, minimum should be 120 hertz for the sole reason, um, because of next generation consoles and how they've done it. I, I think monitors should support 120 minimum. If they support 144, 160, 5, 240, they should all have a 120 hertz option as supported no matter what that should be a minimum i i think 144 is to be honest when i've gamed the difference between 120 hertz and 144 i i can't notice it um 
The only time I do notice it is in competitive gaming, but I'm not a competitive gamer, so it doesn't bother me. Um, <laughs> you got fucked eyes. The, the difference between 120 and 144 is not noticeable to that extent. Um, when using your mouse, yeah, that's going to be noticeable. But in actual gaming scenarios, it's not noticeable. Um, there's been... I watched Linus Tech Tips do, like, a study on it with actual... It, it's not. Not for me, anyways. Because the sole reason... Like, 120 to 144 it is not that noticeable. I've, I've played games on 120, and I've played them on 144 on my PC. And... Yeah, sure, it's, it's a slight bit smoother, but that smoothness, compared to the performance impact that it takes, no. But the sole reason why every monitor should support 120Hz minimum is for the fact that modern games um, should have a 40fps mode. Now, I've only really experienced this lately because of the Steam Deck, but um, when you look at older titles um, or titles that cannot run at 60 FPS on a modern day console, when they're running, uh, pretty much every console, because of the fact that most monitors are set at 60 Hertz, don't have the freedom to be able to do anything other than 30 FPS. So you're stuck with 60 or 30 on consoles. Now consoles support 120 hertz. Because of that, that gives you a lot wider range of different frame rates. And surprisingly, the jump between 40, uh, 30 frames and 40 frames, even though it doesn't sound like a lot, is such a huge jump. It feels closer to 60 FPS being at 40 FPS than it does at 30. Like, 30 is so stuttery in comparison. And, um... One of, one of the games that's a great example of this is uh, Ratchet & Clank. Um, that actually uses... Nothing under 120 for argument's sake should even be used nowadays. Modern day consoles still are not powerful enough. Like, uh, from the perspective of a PC gamer, yes. If your PC is like this, like mine, I don't run anything under 120. I run it at 120 because, like, it, it just makes sense. When it comes to me looking at video footage, it matches the frame rate, so I don't have to worry about stuff like that. It, it, it makes sense for me to run it at 120. Um, and it means I don't have to go into settings and constantly change shit. 120 makes sense. For my use case. Yeah, I, I will agree with that. A Anti-aliasing is a fucking deal breaker for a lot of games. But... I mean, even then, when there are systems that cannot handle games at 120 FPS, they'll use 60 FPS. If a game cannot handle 60, like Cyberpunk, for example, it has to resort to 30 FPS because monitors are stuck at 60 frames and you can't do it. However, if you set a monitor, right, to 120 hertz and then use... Um, render every third frame it's almost like the monitor is running at 40 hertz um, and that way it, it gives you a really smooth cinematic experience good hardware and firmware it's not an excuse for shit console hardware development N no but when you think about it Nvidia has developed it now Let's be honest, the PS5 and the Xbox, their hardware is from 2018. Maybe even 2017. So, we're... 
the problem with console game, it, it's a big problem with console gaming. The fact that all of the hardware that's made for consoles is outdated as soon as it comes out because of the fact that, that if there's such long development time. When it comes to PC hardware, a lot of the stuff is made within a year. There's already an upgrade within a year. I mean, I think it is when you think about it, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes beyond um, you're having to make an entire system. You're having to work out, I don't know. I think when it comes to a company like a PC is made by multiple companies. If you were to add up the amount of companies that are working on making PC hardware, there's a lot more people working on that than Sony or Microsoft working on the consoles. Statistically, I, I think it's a fair excuse. I, I would like for consoles to be more up to date, but at the same time, it's not realistic. to get consoles out straight away as soon as they're made. I mean, you think they've got to build a whole new operating system for the PS5. They've got to make sure the operating system works with their hardware. They have all this stuff, like, maybe for Xbox, the fact that they've copy and pasted the last software, yeah, maybe, maybe it isn't a fair excuse, but... Yeah, I, I suppose they don't have to. I mean, Sony had to for the PS4, because the PS4's OS was shit. So, for the PS5, they needed a new operating system. PS4 was terrible. PS4 was the Windows 8. And then PS3 was like Windows 7. And then PS5 is like Windows 10. It goes from good to shit to good. So, they, they needed that um, OS update. No, yeah, totally. But at the same time... NVIDIA have been known to fuck up. AMD's been known to fuck up. Even Windows is known to fuck up. So, I don't know. It's not just the fact that Sony have done it. Alright, we're on to the second batch of races. Very nice. The thing is, I, th I think one of the larger problems, um, and I, I will put a huge amount of blame on both high-end GPU manufacturers, but also console manufacturers. 4K, right, is, and these make developing games to be such a high visual quality, 4K isn't, well, one, it isn't 4K. Two, it isn't important. In comparison to a higher frame rate, a higher frame rate, in my opinion, is always more important than a 4K option. So, in terms of... I, th I think the problem, the fact that we don't see many games hitting 120 FPS, 60 FPS sometimes, is solely the fact that developers are just focusing on too high graphics i mean there are games from 2010 that we play and we look at and we're like this game still looks pretty good that we go back to that are from 12 13 14 years ago we will still play and be like hmm, this is a pretty good looking game yeah i mean i i've got two 1080p monitors i got 1080p i've not even got 1440p mine is 1080 So, like, I, I want a higher frame rate, but because developers are focusing on, yeah, so sometimes they're 2K, but upscaled to, like, 4K, don't they?
the thing is, developers focus too much on these higher graphics, and it's like, well, the game already looks fucking good from, like, ten years ago. Just fucking make it run smooth. Then, once you can get it to run smooth, make it look better. But it's just a constant cycle of, oh, let's make it look better. Make it look better. Make it look better. Make it look better. Like, there's got to be a point where looking better... Oh, wow, we're, we're well past that. Like, it should be a balance, right. For the next few years, let's make this game run smoother. Then let's make... It's just... It's just silly. Yeah, exactly. You can't polish shit. If the game is shit, and you've just focused on graphics, it, it, it's not going to be enjoyable. I think gaming itself, uh, if, if the industry doesn't make a U-turn and go back to how it used to be, I really do see games dying out. I had this discussion um, a couple of days ago. I, I'm adamant in the next 20, maybe 25 years, maybe 30 years at a push. But I think within the next, by the time we're about 50, maybe, I think story games are going to be dead, to be perfectly honest. Because all of these new games that are coming out, these free-to-play ones, which are the only options that are being given to kids to play, basically. Uh, unless it makes a U-turn. Unless the industry makes a U-turn. But from how the gaming industry is going at the moment, you look at how many games are focusing more on multiplayer. They're focusing more on playing... Like story games themselves they wouldn't be the same as we know it like the story games that we know these single player experiences you go in you enjoy yourself i doubt they would exist the same as we know it they'd be very heavily multiplayer stories at a push like because so many games like are focusing on multiplayer too much Yeah, I suppose. I like the option of having it. I think a co-op campaign is alright, but you've got to have someone that's decent and that understands the game and that doesn't, you know, become a dick about it. And that's, again, another problem with the gaming industry. There's just too much toxicity in the industry as a whole that it's very difficult to find a gaming buddy that, you know, will just genuinely does not care and just wants to play a game. Like, all I want to do is just sit here and play a game. That's all I want to do. But the amount of times, like, I've gone into, like, Call of Duty or whatever, and you've got, like, people absolutely shitting on you because, I don't know, it's just... Me, personally, I'll stay away from multiplayer for that exact reason. Like, unless I know... I mean, yeah, I suppose I don't know where to look, but... You shouldn't have to look to find a good gaming community or whatnot. Gaming should just be good. I shouldn't have to dig around to try and find a corner of the internet that's somewhat decent, you know. That shouldn't be how it should be. It should just, you know, be good. Be enjoyable, you know. <laughs> Fucking Raikkonen. Car behind 3.3 seconds. Absolutely fucking destroying it. Get your ass back. Yeah. 
definitely. Like, different people have different levels of what good is. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. But it shouldn't have to be that I've got to go to a corner of the internet to try and find someone. Um, it, it should be a lot more easier to find people and... You know, it just isn't. That's all why I enjoy streaming, because the people that normally stick around are normally the decent people that don't give a shit. Like, the people that are just toxic don't stick around in a stream. So it's a lot easier to find um, people that are decent. Um, but yeah. And again, I'm like, I'm not a competitive person. No. Yes. I, I, I think that's a point, but I think that's more generally is. Yeah, toxicity is fun, but only for the toxic people. The people on the receiving end of the toxicity, it's never fun. And most, because I'm not a generally toxic person that will just shit on someone in a game, that's why I don't enjoy it, because I don't shit on other people. I don't think because I don't shit on other people is a valid enough reason to then say, well, that's your problem, kind of thing. Like, I, I shouldn't be not enjoying it because I don't shit on other people. It should be the other way around, but it's not. So, I, I don't know. I just think the internet's going downhill. Everything's going downhill. We're going into a downward spiral of fuckity. But, you know, what is, is, really. That's why I enjoy my story games. Because I play at my own pace. I do what I want, and I enjoy it. And if anyone complains about it, well, it's not affected your game, so go fuck yourself. It's a fairly simple thing. But um, I think with how, like, Fortnite and... Um, especially since Fortnite, a lot of games follow this multiplayer battle royale kind of format. Every game must have a multiplayer, and we focus on the multiplayer. I th story games will definitely become like lesser. Hi, you awake now? <laughs> Don't you huff at me? Or yawn, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, like... I just enjoy chilling, having fun with my games. And, you know, if I can chill... If I'm with a party of people that, you know, I can still chill with... Then... I'll stick with it. Oh, I love this song. This is sick. <laughs> Stop huffing! <laughs> God, you're such a fucking drama queen. <laughs> she just sat in the corner on the bed just going... It was funny. It was funny. It was very funny. She's a funny dog. <laughs> Has a hundred and forty viewers. Who's streaming then? Who's streaming that has 130 whatnot viewers then? I'm very curious. Mm 
Where are you going now? Oh, you're getting down. Lovely. <laughs> you're going to sleep on your bed now. So you've decided to spread all your fur all over my bed. Right. For you to now get up and just, you know, plonk your ass down somewhere else. Silly dog. <laughs> Dangerous driver coming through. Yeah, get in the dirt, you prick. <laughs> nice. Oh, fair enough. Not bad. There we go. We got a decent, uh, decent racer. Oh shit! I gotta do it. He's got 141 viewers. Mental. Madness. I'm sorry with two. <laughs> Sad. Share the stream out, chat. <laughs> Let's go. Actually, it's kind of pointless now because we're going to be ending in, like, five minutes. This song is awesome, by the way. I watched a YouTube video of this guy just making drum and bass songs. And this was just like... This slapped. This was a song that he made on the YouTube video, and it, it has such a tune. It just vibes. Twenty percent. Nice. Absolute flying. <laughs> no package. Oh no. See, the thing is, Amazon is very no, very well known to give you a very decent, sizable time window. Oh look, your package will turn up at half two, but it could also come at half six. And 99% of the time, the actual time it turns up is like 10 minutes before half six. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, please do. To be fair, get rid of Amazon. As much as I buy a lot of shit off of Amazon, I could I could do without Amazon. A pain in the ass. Oh fuck, that reminds me I gotta go Christmas shopping tomorrow. Oh bastard. Gotta go Christmas shopping and do another stream. Woohoo. To be fair, I've only got to get Christmas presents for four people, so it's not that bad. Could be worse. I'm gonna go and um, 
I'm probably just gonna go fairly basic this year because financially I've been fucked anyways. Right in the arse. Thank you, cost of living. Thank you, British government. Thank you, Russian versus Ukrainian war. Literally, thank you, coronavirus. Everything. Everything's fucked us up in one time. <laughs> and now we broke, bitches. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just going to go cheap and cheerful and... Yeah. I mean, to, it, it does have little to do with it, to be fair. Because especially when there's, like, other goods that's mostly imported from, like... Yeah. Our government's fucked. I'm not one to get into politics and shit, because, like, I have little to no knowledge. But it does seem kind of ironic that a lot of our problems, when it's come to, like, money and stuff, has happened since... 2010. Seems a bit ironic. Not one to point fingers of blame, but I think there's a blame finger to be pointed at someone. But yeah. Take my life and fade away. Yeah, Cod, I hate to break it to you, but Ridge Racer is that much of an arcade handling simulation. Like, that anybody could pick up Ridge Racer and play it. Like, anybody. It is, the cars are on rails as you drive. It's a very easy game <laughs> to play. That's why I liked it, though, because anyone could pick it up and have fun with it. So it is, hands down, one of the, like, all-time greats, in my opinion. It's such an awesome game. The way that it's structured, it's just so good. And the fact that anyone can pick up Ridge Racer, play it, and be semi-okay at it. Nice. You know. That's a good thing about video games. I think accessibility in video games needs to be amplified a lot more. Like, just adding subtitles and shit like that and colorblindness is not accessibility. Like, it has to be down to the point of the actual game as well. Needs to be fairly accessible. What do you mean? Well, no, I can. I just use the console that's in the other room. Problem solved. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.